It's Brian Preston, the money guy. This is taking a skill that you currently have and doing it on the side. This is using a skill to generate additional income and a skill that you have that perhaps others don't contain. Yeah, I mean, because we're doing these in order of where the potential for income is. So obviously, since this is getting on the where you can be more lucrative, Mm -hmm. it's got to require some special skill set because everybody walking in off the street you're, you're just not going to pay them without that knowledge. And that's what, if you're looking for a place to actually know, do I have a marketable skill I could go sell? Use resources like Flex Jobs, Upwork. Yep. These are places where you can go find freelance jobs. Um, basically, that's the, the answer here is if there's a problem and you have the solution, there's probably a marketplace Absolutely. that can connect you so that you can actually turn this into money that's in the bank for you I, and your family. I was amazed as Daniel was helping us put this together at some of the number like data entry. Like if you want a freelance data entry, you can make twelve dollars an hour. If you want to be a social media coordinator, if you want to like work with a business or a company and like do their Instagram and Facebook and stuff. Uh, entry level, that could be like $20 an hour. Or if you're like advanced and you actually do like Legion, it could be $100 an hour yeah. as a freelance worker working social media management. Uh, copywriting and blog editing, that can be $30 to $100 an hour depending on your proficiency there. And there's even designers. Like if you're someone who has like a creative mindset and maybe you don't know the customer, but you're really creative, there are even platforms out there where you can freelance design work and there are uh, websites that will match you to folks looking for logos or creative type stuff, which is pretty pretty remarkable. Well, I think about us, just uh, the, the mm-hmm. Money Guy show. We have a content relationship. She's part of the family. Yep. San Diego. Yep. I mean, she's got her business. She does. I think about the, the, you know, we've got some, I've been writing a lot recently. We've hired a consultant that's helping me with, with books and other things. That's essentially a freelancer. Yep. I mean, there's all kind of our photographer. Our, our f- photographer is a freelancer. I mean, we have all kind of things. This is where the new economy is, is that if you have a skill set, this can create a tremendous opportunity. So let's kind of talk about the pros and cons of this. So the first pro is that this allows you to use a skill set that you already have or perhaps even improve upon a skill set. Uh, it allows you to maximize excess capacity. Maybe if you find that in the normal business working world, eight to five is great, but you have additional time out and above above and beyond that. It allows you to use some of that excess capacity. And in that, you can make your own hours. You can decide if you want to be a wedding photographer or whatever. You can choose which weekends you work and which weekends you don't work. Yeah. I mean, and, and we've already talked about it. This is good, very, very lucrative. But the cons, let's kind of talk about what's going on on the con side of things. It's back to you got to be special. Yep, so you absolutely. actually have to have something that's marketable, that can be monetized, that is good. That's you, you kind of think about this. I have that client that's a money guy client mm-hmm. that um, shared all of his adult children are super successful. Mm-hmm. And I said, How did you get them to be so successful? And he shared, hey, I just said, Every one of you, figure out what you can do top 5% in the world. Yep. What are you world class in? Go figure out how you can be a market, be a market in that. Because the people, like somebody who has, um, you know, think about cutting hair. Mm-hmm. Top five percent that probably making well. seven figures. Yep, I mean, sure. no kidding. So there's things like that. So figure out what you're competitive in and get out there. You know, the the, the other part is you got to find your own customers. That's, that's a that's a, a little scary. Yep. That's a that's why fortunately there are some marketplaces or, or places that make a connection. They take a little cut off mm-hmm. of it, but you got to stand out. And then don't forget about the self employment tax because this one. is something you've got to pay attention to. There's going to be more taxes, more overhead than you're probably anticipating. So be aware of it on the front end. So this is what we said. Okay, if you can make fifty dollars an hour freelancing, maybe you have a specialized skill set. When you add up what you make, it averages about fifty dollars uh, per hour. Uh, But let's say because it's freelancing, you only do it 20 hours per month. So after you pay taxes on that, you can save about $700 per month towards retirement after taxes, earning 7%. And if you just did that little freelance side hustle for five years, after 30 years, you will have saved about $42,000. But 30 years from now, that $42,000 will have turned into almost $290 thousand dollars here's the other thing i think is interesting i think a freelancing job sometimes can be your first steps into this being your full-time that's job. exactly right yeah this We've really is this is why this is number six this is think about um this is the step that allows some people to use their skill set the things they love the things they're world-class at to go try it out 
And if it works out well enough and it's lucrative enough, maybe this is your bridge mm-hmm. that this is what you do every day of your life yep. since you're not actually working at all because you're good at this, you love doing it. I mean, that is a blessing right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. So see if you can figure out what are you world-class in, Go look at the opportunity and make that happen. Now, the thing, though, uh, we already mentioned it's a pretty competitive marketplace. So if you're thinking about, like, how do you be a mutant there, you got to figure out how to make yourself stand out. If you are someone who wants to freelance, if you are someone who's a photographer or an editor or a designer or whatever, fill in the blank, you got to find some way to peacock yourself, to make yourself stand out from the hundreds of other folks who love to be doing the exact same thing. Well, I think it's interesting because we are in the space. We're content creators. People approach us constantly with ask, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's people offering to share articles on our website, which, by the way, we don't do that sure. stuff, but people don't, it doesn't stop people from asking. But there are, but what I find interesting is that I get literally multiple ask each day. Mm-hmm. Don't really look at 95 to 98% of them because you can tell they just replace Bruce and put Brian. Copy they and paste. replace Karen and put Brian. It's yep. copy and paste. There's no personalization. And that drives me crazy. You have to understand, and this is something I tell everybody, whether I'm talking to somebody in high school, whether I'm talking to somebody in college, or whether I'm talking to somebody who's a freelancer, what are you doing that others are not doing that make you stand out? And I'm always amazed because there are, even though we don't hire outside writers and other things like that to do the content, the The ask that actually get me to bring it to the content team are the ones that do something above and beyond. We've had people who you could tell they actually have watched a few shows. They know a little bit about us. They've actually put the effort in. They've even given us something for free, like they've done a personalized cartoon with something that's very specialized to us. Those type of things stand out, and and that's, that's what you have to do. And that's the other part. If, by the way, if you're doing something creative, you're like a photographer or something, you know, that people want to look at your work, a website designer, you better have a kick rear portfolio on your site. Don't just make it where, hey, I've here's been doing this for so long. Yeah. Here's some, you know, make it where we actually make have the ability to see it stand out from the crowd because when you're in charge of connecting with the public and you're trying to show them, hey, I'm better than everybody else. I'm world class at this. Give them some breadcrumbs to lead them to you so you actually turn that into an opportunity. You know, we started the show by saying when it comes to wealth building, there are really only two options you have. You can spend less money or you can save more money. That's sort of how you impact what your future is going to look like. And side hustles, I would argue right now, is a better time than we've ever had in the history of human civilization to figure out side hustles. It may be an, an aggressive statement on my end, but there's a lot of opportunities to do things. If you can figure out where you fall, where your skill set is, what your capacity looks like, what your time looks like, where you can plug in, there is a great, great opportunity out there for you. And the thing you need to remember is it only takes a little bit to go a long way. And maybe that little bit is freelancing, and that's the dipping your toe into becoming an entrepreneur, to maybe turning it into your day job. There are tons of opportunity if you're willing to take that step, that road less traveled, that little bit extra to really propel your financial life. For sure. So take an inventory of what your time's worth, what you're great great and world-class at. There are so many things yep. going on, Bo. You you nailed that. Um, I want to mention, you know, we've been we started off, I you know, as a content creator, kind of as a hobby. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just doing this as a value add because I had the heart of an educator. Had no idea that this was going to allow us to work with people all over the country. We call this the abundance cycle. If you love what we're creating, you love the shows. Not only subscribe. But I'd also ask for you, if you get to that level of success that you need a co-pilot, you need somebody to tell you what protects you from what you don't know, we ask you to reach out. We work with clients all over the country. We want you to come learn, apply, grow, reach that level of success. That's when we want you. We're going to give you all this stuff for free. So if you're wondering more free stuff, where is it at? Go to moneyguy.com slash resources. We're going to keep throwing this content at you, and we just appreciate the journey you're taking us on. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We're excited for 2021. I'm your host, Brian Preston, Mr. Bo Hansen, Money Got Team, out.